Today we're going to talk about quadratic equations and when they were asked to factor them when there's a leading coefficient. Quadratic equations are hard enough and factoring them is hard enough, but when you throw in a leading coefficient they become really challenging and sometimes you end up in playing this guessing game with numbers and it just ends up taking you a really long time. So today I want to show you two specific strategies that will help you to get to the answer more quickly and cutting out that guessing game. Before I get into the strategies, I want to make sure you understand a few terms. When I talk about quadratic equation, I'm referring to this equation here at the top. The way that we recognize it is it has an x squared. And when I say leading coefficient, I'm referring to the number that's in front of that x squared. If there's a number in front of the x squared, we call this a quadratic equation with a leading coefficient. The number that's in front of the x is called the coefficient of the middle term, and the number that's all by itself is called the constant term. We are going to use those two numbers in our factoring, but the first thing we're going to pay attention to is the leading coefficient. So let's take a look at this first example here. The first question we always ask ourselves when we see a problem that has a leading coefficient is, can that leading coefficient be factored out? Is it a greatest common factor? In this case, our leading coefficient is negative 1. So what I do is I wonder, can the other two numbers be divided by negative 1 and still result in whole numbers? If so, negative 1 is a greatest common factor. 8 and 20 can both be divided by negative 1 and still result in positive, I'm sorry, whole numbers. Therefore, negative 1 is a greatest common factor. So what I'm going to do is pull it out. I'm going to take negative 1 and write it on the outside of the parentheses. And on the inside, I'm going to write everything that's remaining when I divide it by negative 1. So negative 1 in front of the x squared divided by negative 1 leaves us with 1. And we don't need to write it. We can just write x squared. 8 divided by negative 1 leaves us with negative 8, and I bring along the x. 20 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 20. Now that I've done this, I would go through the factor process like normal, but I use a method called the crisscross method so that I don't have to play a major guessing game. I take the number that's at the end, which is the constant term, and write it on the bottom. And I take the number in the middle, which is the coefficient of the middle term, and I write it on the top. And I know that I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me the constant term and two numbers that add to give me the coefficient of the middle term. Rather than spinning all around with numbers, I like to go in order so that I don't leave anything out. So what I mean by that is I would take 1 and say 20 divided by 1 is 20. Can I ever do anything to those two numbers to make them add up to negative 8? No. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Can I ever do anything to those two numbers to make them add up to negative 8? Yes. If the 10 is negative and the 2 is positive, they would add up to a negative 8, and obviously, they also multiply to a negative 20. So coming back over here, I leave my leading coefficient on the outside, and I open up two parentheses, each with an x in the front. I go ahead and I write the two numbers that I came up with with my crisscross method exactly as they are. And that is the end of the problem. We have factored the quadratic equation even though it has a leading coefficient. Granted, that leading coefficient was pretty easy because it was negative 1, so let's take a look at this next problem. This next problem, the leading coefficient is a negative 3. So we're going to call A are negative 3. Again, I wonder, can 30 and negative 75 be divided by negative 3 and still give me whole numbers? If so, negative 3 is the greatest common factor and it can be factored out. In this case, 30 and negative 75 can be divided by negative 3 and still give me whole numbers. So that means I can go ahead and factor even this negative 3 out. Just like last time, that means I'm going to take each of the numbers and divide it by negative 3 and write what results. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. We don't need to write it. We just write x squared. 30 divided by negative 3 is negative 10, and I bring along the x. 
7, negative 75 divided by negative 3 is a positive 25. Going back over here to our crisscross method, now that it's a normal quadratic, I write the constant on the bottom, I write the coefficient of the middle term on the top, and I go through my factors of the constant. 1 times 25. There's nothing I can ever do to those two numbers that would ever make them add up to a negative 10, so that's out. 2 can't go into 25, neither can 3, neither can 4, but 5 can. 5 times 5 would give me 25, and if they were both negative, they would add up to a negative 10. So those are my two numbers. Coming back over here, I leave the greatest common factor on the outside, and I open up two parentheses, each with an x in the front, and I write the numbers exactly as they are. Now, this is an acceptable answer, but the more precise way of writing it would be to put a squared on there. Whoops. Because technically, it's x minus 5 times x minus 5, which is x minus 5 squared. And that is your final answer for factoring that quadratic equation, even though it has a leading coefficient. So the two examples I gave you both had a leading coefficient that had a great, was a greatest common factor, and we were able to factor out that leading coefficient and then not have to deal with it. That's the first question you always want to ask yourself because obviously it makes things really easy. But what if you ask yourself that question and it's not a greatest common factor? You can't factor out the leading coefficient. That's the next strategy I'm going to show you. So if we have a situation where it's not a greatest common factor, we have to use the multiply divide method. And I have the steps written out here on the top, but I'm going to go ahead and show you with an example of how to work this out. So let's take a look at the top example, 2x squared plus x minus 6. The a in this situation is 2. We can still ask ourselves the question, can I factor 2 out? Is 2 a greatest common factor? 6 can be divided by 2, but the 1 as the coefficient of the middle term cannot. It would leave us with a fraction, which tells us 2 is not a greatest common factor, and we cannot factor it out. And you might think, factor it out, who cares? Let's make it a fraction. But having a fraction in a quadratic is a lot messier than just dealing with a leading coefficient. So what we're going to do instead is use our crisscross method in combination with our multiply and divide method. Here's what I mean. We're going to take the leading coefficient and multiply it by the constant term. And instead of just writing the constant term on the bottom, we're going to write the product of the leading coefficient and the constant term on the bottom. So 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. That's the first thing that's different here. After that, we go back to our normal technique where we write the coefficient of the middle term on the top. And then we go through our factors of the bottom number to see which ones can add up to the top number. And I like to go in order. So 1 times 12 gives us 12, but will never add up to 1. 2 times 6 gives us 12, but will never add up to 1. 3 and 4 gives us 12 and will add up to 1 if the 3 is negative. So a negative 3 and a positive 4 multiply to give us negative 12 and add up to 1, so we're doing great. So we come over here, we open up our two parentheses, and we write minus 3 and positive 4. In the last two problems, that was the end. We were done. But the issue here is that we did something different in the beginning. We actually multiplied everything by 2 in the beginning. So the numbers we have right now is not an accurate representation of the original problem. In fact, if you foiled this, you would not end up back at the original. It's pretty obvious because if I multiplied these two, I would not get 2x squared. So for that reason, there's another step we need to take here. And that's the fourth step. We need to divide each of these integers by the leading coefficient. So since we multiplied by 2, here's the second part of the problem, we now need to divide by 2. Hence why we call it the multiply divide method. In this case, the 4 divided by 2 does simplify, 
to a positive 2. And the 3 divided by 2 does not. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 2 and we're going to bring it in front of the x and then write the minus 3. That was a little fast, so I want to make sure you understand that. I'm bringing the 2 that's staying in the denominator in front of the x. I didn't have to do that on the second factor because 4 divided by 2 simplified to 2 over 1. And I guess you could say I bring the 1 in front of the x, but I don't have to write it. But since the first factor, 3 divided by 2, doesn't simplify, I have to bring the 2 in front. This makes sense, though, because if I went and multiplied these two, 2x times x, I would get back to where I started with the 2x squared. So everything's looking good. And this is now your final answer. Now in the past when you solved this, you probably did a big guessing game thinking of all the multiples of, I'm sorry, all the factors of 6 and all the factors of 2 and combining them in all different possible ways. And even though this isn't that bad on this problem because 2 and 6 don't have that many factors, imagine if you had a problem like this next one where there are multiple factors. Let me go ahead and erase this so that you can see the problem a little better. Now here, we'd have to go through all the factors of 4 and all the factors of 12, and this would take quite a while. So I'm going to have you use my shortcut in this one to make things a little easier. So I'm going to walk you through the same steps that we did on the last one. The first thing we're going to do is recognize that the leading coefficient is 4, and 19 and 12, well, 12 could be divided by 4, but 19 can't. So our method that we used on the first two problems doesn't work. So now we're going to use the multiply divide method. When we draw our crisscross, we still put negative 19 on the top like normal. The difference now is that we're going to multiply 4 and 12 and write that on the bottom. Now we're going to go through all the factors of 48 until we get 2 that add up to 19. 1 and 48 will never add up to 19. 2 and 24, ooh, we're getting close, but it's never going to add up to 18. 3, oh, and let's see, 18, 6, uh, 16, oh, there we go. Sorry, it's early in the morning. 3 and 16, those do add up to 19, especially if both of them are negative. Plus, having both of them be negative multiplies to give us our positive 48. So we come back over here, we open up our two parentheses with our x's in the front, and we write our numbers. But it's not called multiply divide method for nothing. We multiplied, we still got to divide. So now we have to divide each of these by 4. The second factor divides really nicely. But since the first factor doesn't divide as nicely, we got to bring that 4 into the front and then write the rest. And again, that makes sense because 4 times x, 4x times x, gives us 4x squared. And that is your final answer. All right, let's just do one more for good measure, especially one that's going to look pretty ugly like this guy. Here our leading coefficient is negative 5. You always ask yourself, is negative 5 a greatest common factor? And while negative 15 can be divided by negative 5, negative 28 can't. So negative 5 is not a greatest common factor. So here we go with our multiply divide method. Get your crisscross. Go ahead and put negative 28 on the top like normal. But now you're going to multiply negative 5 and negative 15. Negative 5 and negative 15 add, multiplies to give you a positive 75. So now we're going to go through all the factors of 75. 1 and 75, that's not going to add up to negative 28. 2 doesn't work. 3 and 25, bingo. Those are our two numbers, and it works because they're both negative. Negative 3, negative 25 add up to negative 28, and they multiply to a positive 75. So we come back over here. We open up our two parentheses. We put x in the front. We write our two numbers exactly as they are. And then we say, wait a minute, it's called multiply divide method. 
So now we have to divide each of these by that leading coefficient, which was a negative 5. Again, the second factor is real nice. Negative 25 divided by negative 5 is a positive 5. But this one doesn't work out as well. So here's my suggestion. Rather than put a negative 5 in the front, which can be okay if you want to, you could always, well, you could do multiple things here. It'll end up working itself out. Let's just go ahead and write the negative 5 in the front so it looks like what we had before. So if we put the negative 5 in the front and did this, the reason why I like that is because the negative 5 times the x will get us back to the negative 5x squared. Another method you could have done here is pull the negative out into the front, which is probably the way it should have been done if you're doing a multiple choice question, because multiple choice questions tend to prefer having a negative in the front. But there's nothing wrong with this answer. Just understand that it could be written like this, or it could be written like this, with an x plus 5. Um, either one of those is fine. They are the same one you just put the negative out like we did in the first problem. So remember when you're dealing with quadratic equations that have a leading coefficient, your first question is always, can I pull out that leading coefficient? Is the leading coefficient a greatest common factor? If it is, great. That makes your life easier. If it isn't, don't worry. You can just use the multiply divide method. You just have to remember it's called multiply divide method. Do not forget to divide at the end. If you have any other questions, you can go ahead and contact us on our website and we'd be happy to help you. Uh, on our website, we also have a bunch of links for how to use strategies for math and science and grammar similar to this one. The links for everything are down below.